Greetings, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Get your King James Bible and turn it up to the book of Ezekiel, chapter 31. We're going to read the entire chapter. This study is going to be basically, it's kind of to question things rather than make you have a conclusion but it's do were there other races or peoples who were contemporaries with Adam and Eve or were they before Adam and Eve or were they you know well contemporaries there in this book Ezekiel one of the most neglected books in the Bible, in my opinion. Ezekiel is probably the wildest book in the Bible, even surpassing that of Revelation, if you ask me. Somebody asked me to do a commentary on Ezekiel, and I just do not feel qualified. Honestly, I don't. It, it's just, it's out there. So, let's start. Ezekiel chapter 31, verse 1. And it came to pass in the eleventh year, in the third month, in the first day of the month, that the word of the Lord came unto me, saying. So the word of the Lord came unto Ezekiel. Verse 2. Son of man, speak unto Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and to his multitude. Whom art thou like in thy greatness? Question. Verse 3, listen carefully. Behold, the Assyrian was a cedar in Lebanon with fair branches. Did you catch that? Behold, the Assyrian was a cedar in Lebanon with fair branches. So here you got a figure of speech. It's comparing the Assyrian which was a group of people that lived in Assyria. I mean, you're talking about a group of people. And then it's using a figure of speech saying that they're a cedar in Lebanon. Okay, I mean, they were in that general area. But not only that, this is what they call parallelism. Because it's using one thing to parallel another. Behold, the Assyrian was was, not like, not similar to, behold, the, Assyri the Assyrian was a cedar in Lebanon with fair branches and with a shadowing shroud and of an high nature, and his top was among the thick boughs. Uh, a bough is just a clump of branches and leaves, right? Um, don't they sing at uh, December around December 25th? Deck the halls with boughs of holly. Fa la 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 la. Yeah. Verse 4. The waters made him great. Now, in the book of Revelation, now I guess we better go there. Hold on. All right. Let's use the Bible to interpret the Bible. In Revelation chapter 17 and verse 15, which I'm getting ready to do a Bible study on this about the cup. Uh, let's see. Revelation 17 and verse 15. Let's use the Bible to interpret the Bible. Not, not Bob's opinion. And he saith unto me, The waters, the waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth are peoples and multitudes multitudes and nations and tongues. The waters which thou sawest where the whore sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. Okay, back to Ezekiel 31, chapter, uh, verse 4. The waters made him great. Who? The Assyrian. 
Behold, the Assyrian was a cedar in Lebanon. The waters made him great. The deep set him up on high with her rivers running round about his plants and sent out her little rivers unto all the trees of the field. Now, I had somebody whose opinion I respect tell me that trees uh, refers to or can refer to kingdoms. And I would most certainly not um, dispute that. But of course, what are kingdoms made out of? Groups of people. Now, if you don't know who the Assyrians are, the Assyrians invaded and took northern Israel, whose capital was Samaria, captive. And they killed a lot of them and took the rest captive. But you could also read, if you want to read about uh, Assyria, their capital was Nineveh. Perhaps you've read the book of Jonah, you know, the Jonah and the whale. He went to Nineveh and preached repentance to the capital city of Nineveh, which is the Assyrians. So, the waters made him great. The deep set him up on high with her rivers running round about his plants and sent out her little rivers unto all the trees of the field. So, if the sea, Assyrian is a cedar, which is a tree, by the way. A cedar is a tree. We have cedars down here in Florida. Then what are these other trees of the field? Evidently, they're people and or kingdoms. Verse 5. So family trees, right? Verse 5. Therefore his height was exalted above all the trees of the field. And his boughs were multiplied, and his branches became long because of the multitude of waters when he shot forth. And for those of you that don't know it, the Assyrian Empire was a contemporary of the Babylonian Empire. They were the ones that took Judah captive. You can read about that in the book of Jeremiah, the Lamentations of Jeremiah. You can read about it in the book of Daniel. The the Assyrian Empire rose up first, and then the Babylonian Empire conquered the Assyrians. And when the Israelites of northern Israel, who were taken as slaves by the Assyrians, when the Assyrian Empire collapsed, um, Israel hightailed it out of the area. They left. I, you know, they didn't let the door hit them in the rear end on their way out. I mean, they ran. They'd been slaves. They'd watched their country destroyed, their people killed, and they were made slaves. And uh, by the way, the uh, perhaps you've heard of Dagon, the fish, the half fish god. He was fish from the waist down and man from the waist up. Perhaps you've heard of Poseidon. Um, the little mermaid that Disney did, mermaids, you know, the bottom down is like a fish tail and the bottom, the top up is, um, uh, human, you know, you kind of wonder all this genetic manipulation that they're doing today. Was that done back in the old days? I don't know. So did Noah, Noah was told to take two of every creature. Did he take two of these family trees that were in the garden? It would seem to indicate if they existed at the same time. So, all right, let's see. Therefore his height was exalted above all the trees of the field, and his boughs were multiplied, and his branches became long because of the multitude of waters when he shot forth. Verse 6. All the fowls of heaven made their nests in his boughs, and under his branches did all the beasts of the field bring forth their young, and under his shadow dwelt all great nations. Now they're talking about trees, and then they're saying, oh, and under his shadow dwelt all great nations. 
See, this is parallelism and figures of speech. All great nations. And by the way, this word nation is the same word that they translate as Gentile in other parts, in other in the uh, Old Testament, in the Bible. It's the same word. Sometimes the King James translators use the word nation or nations or Gentile and Gentiles, depending upon the context. It's the same word, though. Keep that in mind. I've had people tell me that's a mistranslation. I don't think so. It's just, you know, whatever. Verse 7. And we're getting ready to go to the meat. Thus was he fair. We're talking about the Assyrian. Thus was he fair in his greatness, in the length of his branches, for his root was by great waters. Yeah, they were in the Middle East, which uh, basically that area connects the land from Africa, Asia Minor, and Europe. That is where the three, the those continents all kind of meet you know and if you were doing trade and commerce with different parts you know from Africa to go to Asia or Africa to go to Europe or Europe to Asia or whatever I mean this is where it would always you would go through this area I mean it was a trade area and I believe the Garden of Eden was in this area but that's just my opinion all right, so, and under his shadow dwelt all great nations. Verse 7, thus was he fair in his greatness. When it says he was fair, does, does that mean he played poker without cheating? Or does that have reference to his countenance or his complexion you know what did the wicked witch or the evil witch or queen or whatever used to go to the magic mirror in Cinderella and go or was it Cinderella or Snow White I, I think it was Snow White I, I don't know I, I never really cared for Disney much but she used to go to the magic mirror and go mirror mirror on the wall who's the fairest fairest of them all. I think it was Snow White. White, Snow White. Isn't Snow White? Thus was he fair in his greatness, in the length of his branches, for his root was by great waters. Listen carefully. Verse 8. The cedars in the garden of God could not hide him. The cedars, remember the Assyrian is, was like a cedar, was a cedar of Lebanon, right? The cedars, which is a tree, the cedars in the garden of God could not hide him. Evidently, this guy's tall. Probably could have played basketball, right? The fir trees were not like his boughs. Fir trees. So you got cedars, you got fir trees. The fir, the fir trees were not like his boughs, and the chestnut trees were not like his branches. Nor any tree in the garden of God was like unto him in his beauty. What was the garden of God? Isn't that Eden? Well, let's keep reading. Nor any tree, what tree? Family tree? Nor any tree in the garden of God was like unto him in his beauty. Isn't that why Satan fell? Because of his beauty? Oh, yeah. All right, let's take a look at Ezekiel 28. And then we're going to go back and read that again. Uh, let's skip down to verse 11. Ezekiel 28 and verse 11. We're going to take a look at beauty. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus. 
Now, people will say, oh, well, see, this is talking about a human king. I'm not going to argue and say that's wrong, but who's the power behind the power? Isn't Satan the prince of this world? Oh, yeah. Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. And perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Wow. he w The king of Tyrus was in the garden of Eden? I mean, you're talking over a thousand years. That guy'd have to be pretty old, huh? Unless, of course, they're talking about the power behind the power. Let's keep reading. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering. The sardius, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. Now, you don't may not know it, but these stones were on the breastplate that the high priest of Israel, the Levite priesthood, uh, priest, the high priest wore. Each one of these stones, if you take a look in the book of Revelation, uh, are mentioned in, I believe, for the New Jerusalem. I believe it's part of the foundation. And every stone has reference to one of the 12 tribes of Israel. But you could do that on your own. I don't want to make this a three-hour study. It's already 17 minutes, and I was hoping it'd only be a 10-minute study. All right. Um, the emerald and the carbuckle and gold. The workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in, in thee in the day that thou wast created. Created? The king of Tyrus was created? And he was in Eden, the garden of God? I thought human humans were born. I mean, Adam was, as far as I know, he was the only one mentioned that was created. Well, at least from the ground. And then Eve was created from Adam's rib. But there's no other, you know, mention of any humans being created besides Adam and Eve. So, does this refer to angels who were created? Let's keep reading. Verse 14. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. What's a cherub? It's an angel. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Now, what human was upon the holy mountain of God and walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire? Obviously, this is talking about the anointed cherub. Do you know that the uh, on the mercy seat, they had two angels with their wings facing each other? Satan, Lucifer, the devil, was one of these anointed cherubs. He covered the throne of God. Did you know that? Verse 15. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created till iniquity was found in thee. What is iniquity? Sin, wickedness, evil. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created, not born, till iniquity was found in thee. By the multitude of thy merchandise thou hast filled the midst of thee with violence. Violence! And thou hast sinned. There were, therefore I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God. And I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. 
beauty doesn't sound like our you, you don't want to be too you know pfft, not a good thing right thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness I will cast thee to the ground I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee doesn't the Bible say that Satan was cast out oh yeah he was cast out all right uh, let's see Let's go back to Ezekiel 31 and verse 8. The cedars in the garden of God could not hide him. The fir trees were not like his boughs, and the chestnut trees were not like his branches, nor any tree, nor any tree in the, uh, in the garden of God was like unto him in his beauty. I have made him fair by the multitude of his branches so that all the trees of Eden that were in the garden of God envied him. Whoa, did you catch that? There were trees, family trees, that were in the garden of God, and they envied him. Let's read that again. I have made him, the Assyrians, I have made him fair by the multitude of his branches so that all, all the trees of Eden that were in the garden of God envied him. So you got other trees in Eden, which is the garden of God, and they envied him. Him. Do you know what envy is? It's an emotion. You ever seen a woman look at another uh, a woman that was absolutely gorgeous and have envy? Or men for that matter. I mean, I'm not picking on women. There's been people I've envied. Um, some people envy other people for having money. I have made him fair by the multitude of his branches so that all the trees of Eden that were in the garden envied him. All right, let's close this out real quick. I'm just going to kind of buzz through this. Uh, let's see. Verse 10. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, because thou hast lifted up thyself in height and hath shut up his top bow, his top among the thick boughs and his heart is lifted up in his height. I have therefore delivered him into the hand of the mighty one of the heathen. Um, that's That was the Babylonians, right? He shall surely deal with him. I have driven him out for his wickedness. And strangers, the terrible of the nations, have cut him off and have left him upon the mountains. And in all the valleys, his branches are fallen and his boughs are broken by all the rivers of the land. And all the people of the earth are gone down from his shadow and have left him. Upon his ruin shall all the fowls of the heaven remain, and all the beasts of the field shall be upon his branches, to the end that none of all the trees by the waters exalt themselves for their height, neither shoot up their top among the thick boughs, neither their trees stand up in their height, all that drink water, for they are all delivered unto death to the nether parts of the earth in the midst of the children of men with them that go down to the pit. Thus saith the Lord God, In the day when he went down to the grave, I caused a mourning, I covered the deep for him, and I restrained the floods thereof. And the great waters were strayed, stayed, and the great waters were stayed, and I caused Lebanon to mourn for him, and all the trees of the field fainted for him. How do trees faint? F-A-I-N-T. They don't. We're talking figures of speech here. I have made the nations to shake at the sound of his fall. When I cast him down to hell with them that descend into the pit and all the trees of Eden, 
the choice and best of Lebanon, all that drink water shall be comforted in the nether parts of the earth. They also went down into hell with him unto them that be slain by the sword, and they that were his arm that dwelt under his shadow in the midst of the heathen. To whom art thou thus like in glory and in greatness among the trees of Eden? Yet shalt thou be brought down with the trees of Eden unto the nether parts of the earth. Thou shalt lie in the midst of the uncircumcised with them that be slain by the sword. This is Pharaoh and all his multitude, saith the Lord God. Now, the Egyptians and the um, were from Ham. Perhaps you've heard of the curse of Canaan. Canaan was the son of Ham. Uh, Ham also, his people populated Ethiopia. Keep that in mind. Now, people will say, oh, well, what you just said, Bob, is, is wrong. And they'll point to Genesis chapter 3, verse 20. And Adam called his wife's name Eve because... She was the mother of all living. And they'll say, see, see, this is proof right here. No, she, she, Eve was the mother of all living. So she, there couldn't have been other people in the garden before or contemporaries with unless she was the mother of all living. So she had to be the mother of the Assyrians and everybody else. Okay, does all mean all? Was Eve the mother of the fish? All the fish? No. What about the birds? No. What about the lizards? No. She wasn't the mother of all living. Well, Bob, you're stretching it. That's You're talking about other animals. She was the mother of all living human beings. Okay, well, let's take a look at something. All right, let's go to the book of Romans, chapter 3, verse 23. The Bible declares, Paul, for all have sinned. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Uh, does that include Christ? Did Christ sin? Did Jesus come short of the glory of God? All right, well, let's go to Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14. Hebrews 4.14 4, Seeing then that we have a great high priest. Amen to that. Seeing that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted, like as we are, yet without sin. Jesus was without sin. So it is all mean all. For all have come short, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. No. Because all does not mean Jesus. Jesus was without sin. If Jesus sinned, you better look for another Messiah, and the Jews will be happy to bring him out for you. Probably soon. I don't know when. People have been saying the end for a long time. Yeah, I don't know. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly, boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Jesus was not, did not fall short of the glory of God. Jesus was God in the flesh. If you don't believe me, read 1 Timothy 3.16. Or is it 2 Timothy 3.16? It's one of the Timothy's 3.16. 
And if you don't believe me, read Matthew chapter 3 and verse 17. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. So, there you go. Luke 3.22 And the Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him, and a voice came from heaven which said, Thou art my beloved Son, in thee I am well pleased. So, were there other people in the garden? I, you make up your own mind. But I tell you what, there's a question for you. Let's go to Genesis chapter 4 and verse 17. And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bare Enoch. Not the Enoch that God took up to heaven, different Enoch. And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bare Enoch, and he builded a city and called the name of the city after the name of his son Enoch. So, where did Cain get his wife? And why would two people, a husband and a wife and a kid, build a city? Think about it. So, you know, what can I tell you? Were there other people in the garden besides Adam and Eve? Actually, when you take a look at it, Adam is a racial description. And when it says that the uh, Assyrians were fair, think of Snow White, mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of them all? Uh, if you want to see some people that are fair in complexion, go to Sweden. Well, yeah, look at the people that were born in Sweden 50 years ago. That's what I should say. Yeah, not 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 the uh, so-called refugees that they're flooding it with. I, I tell you what, you want to see people that are fair-complected, go to Iceland. Those people are descended from Sweden and Denmark and Norway. Mostly Denmark, I believe. I'm not sure. Their official language is uh, Danish. But uh, half the people in Iceland speak English, approximately. Don't quote me on that. But you want to see some fair-complected people, blonde-haired, possibly blue-eyed, go to Iceland. There you go. Adam is a racial description. And after all, who printed the Bibles? Africa? Asia? No. No. No, no. Who uh, built all the churches? Where are all the churches located? The majority of the churches built in the world for Jesus were built in the United States and in Europe. I mean, there are literally thousands of churches in, in Europe uh, that have been around for hundreds of years. So, maybe now you know why there is such a hatred for the people. Yeah, there's a hatred for the people that have carried the Bible. And what can I tell you? But I know this creates more questions than giving more than answers, but this is what they taught a hundred years ago in the churches before we became liberal and started having sodomite marriages and abortions and witchcraft and Harry Potter taught in the public schools. Uh, and people say that, oh, well, they were a bunch of racists. Well, at least they didn't have sodomites 
adopting children taken away by the state from Christian parents that wanted to homeschool and not vaccinate their children with uh, aluminum and mercury. What can I tell you? All right, well, this is Chaplain Bob Walker. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. In Jesus' precious name, amen.